Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the production of haploids through tissue culture technique or plant tissue culture technique. Now haploids are basically sporophytes with gametophytic chromosome number. Now when we say sporophyte, they have two. Uh, they are basically two n chromosome. But here what we are saying that they are defined as sporophytes. Sporophytes, okay, as sporophytes, not these sporophytes with a gametophytic chromosome number. That means the chromosome number is reduced. That is n number of chromosome now haploids can be produced through variety of methods or different methods are being used and the most common ones are anther and pollen culture then ovule culture these are the most important ones uh, other than this chromosome elimination through interspecific hybridization or bulbosome technique is also used now uh, production of haploids now here you see in the case of anther and pollen culture culturing anthers or microspore on an artificially defined medium such um, type of um, culturing technique leads to the growth of microspores into haploids sporophytes known as androgenic haploids the term androgenic basically or androsium you have heard about it it relates to the male counter Part. This was first uh, achieved in the production of haploids from anther culture in Datura by Guha and Mysuri. So far, successfully um, haploids have been produced in Datura by Guha and Mysuri in the year 1966 and 1967. So it's a uh, way back. So let us see the overall uh, procedure. How do we go about with the production of androgenic haploids through anther culture now as you can see is the uh, is the flowering plant is there that is the mother plant so from there you collect the unopened flower buds please keep that in mind collect unopened flower buds then what you do is that once you collect the unopened flower buds you go for surface sterilization you are where you use sodium hypochlorite solution usually it's four percent and ethanol 70 percent but keep that in mind in case of ethanol only you have to uh, go for processing for 30 seconds not beyond that now once you are done with the sterilization part you wash those surface sterilants with distilled water or other sterilized water now after washing with a uh, sterilized distilled water you split flower buds and take out the stamen now once you take out the stamen from the unopened flower bud you open the flower but then you take out the stamen and then remove the filaments now once you remove the filaments you are left with only the anther so what you do is that you take those anther and incubate at 24 to plus minus 2 degrees centigrade in dark for 3 to 4 weeks basically here uh, we are mostly stressing on ms medium now ms medium is murashik and scoops medium and it, it is one of the basal medium for plant tissue culture however it depends on the type of the species you are working on there are other mediums are also possible to work with now there are two possibilities one will go direct uh, organogenesis that means what you are getting is you are getting uh, the formation of organs and all through direct androgenesis now the other way is indirect way that is you get an callus or an callus is basically an intermediate and or mass of undifferentiated cells from callus you get the organs now once you get the organs and those you regenerate them those are the regenerated plantlets which are haploids in nature now as you can see here these are regenerative plantlets so you can go for subculture and go on producing large number of haploids Coming to the production of androgenic haploids through microspore or pollen culture. Here the technique is pretty much similar to your anther culture. Only thing in this case, in this case is what you see that you take out the anthers and you crush them so that the pollens are released. released. So extraction of pollen is there. Then after this you do the collection of pollen. The, obviously when you crush them you crush them in a liquid suspension. The liquid suspension with anthers and microspores is filtered through a nylon sieve which allows only the microspore to pass through so we can see here collection of pollen grains in the tube so you're using an nylon mesh so that only the microspores are can pass through to the tube now basically what uh, what is here is wash next step is washing of pollens now once you are done with the washing of pollens what you do is that you go for culturing 
them in different media so it can be ms media it can be gamba v5 media it can be woody plant media so it depends on from species to species so from pollens what you're getting is a embryo through the process of embryogenesis and then from there ultimately this embryo will develop into a haploid platelet so uh, here uh, we have talked about uh, the embryogenetic pathway it can also go organogenetic pathway that means directly organs are formed without the intermediate embryo formation coming to the ovule culture now ovules are aseptically isolated from the ovary and are grown aseptically on chemically defined nutrient medium under control condition now there was a lot of success in gymnosperm like zemia epidra successfully hydro um, haploids have been produced in case of angiosperm also a large number of haploids are produced like wheat barley and tobacco now let us see the flow chart or the experimental work how we can go about now you can see in the figure there is a mother plant and the flowers are there and obviously there the ovary will develop so what you do is that you take out the flower then with the help of scalpel, uh, scalpel excise the ovary that is the separation of ovary and then once you separate the ovary you go for culturing them in different medium um, ms medium is the most basic one besides this again i'm saying here it depends on the type of species you are working with so the in one of the pathway you see regeneration that means incubate the culture along with your ovary for 16 hours at 25 degree under fluorescent light and after two weeks uh, you are expected to get a haploid plant but this two weeks is not constant because it may go for longer duration again it depends from species to species the other pathway you see is the induction so you incubate the culture for 16 hours at 24 degrees centigrade in a dark and then you wait for a uh, certain time again it varies from time to time uh, so that you get a morphogenetic response it may be it may be in the form of your embryogenesis or organogenetic pathway any pathway it can follow so after this what you see is that the production of haploid plants and once you get this target of haploid plant you can go for subculturing and maintaining a large number of haploid plants of your interest coming to the last one that is chromosome elimination through interspecific hybridization or bulbosome technique now in this technique haploids are produced from process with hordium bulbosome in case of wheat and barley now wheat uh, when barley or wheat is crossed with hordium bulbosum the whole set of chromosome of hordium bulbosum is gradually and selectively eliminated from the developing embryo so what you are doing is that after the cross you are slowly slowly eliminating the chromosome of hordium bulbosum now most of the seedlings obtained from such crosses are haploid having only one set of chromosome from hordium bulgari or triticum estivum so triticum estivum is basically wheat and hordium bulgari is your barley so let us see the importance of your haploids there are n number of importance are there there are, in fact there are a large number of uh, economically importance are there as well as research from point of view also a lot of importance are there for haploids now you see uh, in the first one we are talking about the gametoclonal variation so that is one of the aspect where once you when you go for subculturing of haploids you see that three four plants are growing in one test tube. out of this one may be totally different than other so you take and analyze those you might find that these are some important trait or different from others which is beneficial for the company or for our interest so that becomes your gametoclonal variation then for evolutionary studies then genetics and cytogenetics research obviously when you go for cytogenetic genetic research and all since the chromosome number is reduced to half that is n it becomes easy for further analysis uh, pertaining to genetics and cytogenetic besides uh, study of metabolic pathways is also much simpler because it has the reduced number of chromosome then uh, one of the most important is identifying the recessive trait now if haploid has a recessive trait in it it will get expressed however when you see in terms of genetics when dominant and recessive, recessive traits are um, gene or allele are present the dominant one is always expressed but in case of haploids if only recessive allele is there it will get always expressed and most importantly production of homozygous lines so this was all about your haploids thank you and have a nice time